everybody, it's me Sarah here from Wholesale Ted and today I'm going to be giving you an updated for 2019 step-by-step -step tutorial on how to build a semi-automated AliExpress dropshipping store using Shopify and Obelo. And I know that in my New Zealand accent, it sounds like I'm saying step by step, but really I mean S-T-E-P by S-T-E-P. Since my last tutorial on the subject, a lot has changed and I mean a lot. So even if you've watched my previous tutorial videos, I'm sure that you will learn a lot by watching this one as well. And I'll also be giving lots of bonus tips along the way for how you can optimize your store for sales and conversions. Now this tutorial is gonna be a 20 step process and I've added in some new steps for this year's tutorial. For each step, I'll be switching over to my computer screen and showing you exactly how to do it so that you can follow along even if you're a beginner and you have no technical or design experience. And if you want to skip ahead to a particular step, then I'll have timestamps in the video description so you can jump straight to that section. Now I'm gonna switch over to my computer right now to give you a quick preview of the store that we are going to build. All right, so here is the store that we're gonna build. You can see that we've got a nice looking homepage with an image slider. And if we scroll down, you'll be able to see we've got our different products featured here for a nice, simple, professional, clean looking design. And we've got a simple yet effective uh, footer with trust icons. And we've got a live chat messenger app installed so that customers can easily contact you. And check this out, we've got a working menu with a sub menu. And if we open up the coffee mug collection page and we click on the self stir mug, you can see that we've got a simple yet clean professional product page. And we've got trust icons installed on the product pages to add authority. And we've got recommended items uh, down here from the same collection. And if we come back up, you can see we've got multiple product variations for this mug with different colors available. And if we add this item to our cart, you'll see that our store is working. And I've got a surprise uh, for the checkout page for this year's tutorial. So let's go open that up. And here you go. On the checkout page, we're also going to be adding our logo here to increase brand trust and authority. And so this is what we're going to build. So let's get started. Step one, sign up for the free Shopify 14 day trial. The first thing that you need to do is sign up for an account with Shopify and they have a free 14 day trial that you can use. I'll have a link to how you can get Shopify in the video description below. Please note that video description does contain affiliate links. Here at Wholesale Ted, all of our YouTube videos are free and affiliate links help us keep our videos free. All right, let me switch over to my tutorial clip to show you how to do this. All right, so come and click the get started button at the top of the page and now just enter in the email address, password and store name that you want to use for your store. For your email, I recommend setting up a new email account, like say a new Gmail account with your store name since all store emails, including customer emails, are going to be sent to whatever email address that you use here. And of course, once you're done, just click the create store button and just let your know, Shopify load up your new store. Sitting tight here. Woo, success. <laughs> all right, so now Shopify will ask you to fill out this little survey. It does not matter at all what you put. You can put anything that you like. This is just data that Shopify is collecting. It has no legal impact on you. Now you'll see here that our store currency is set to pesos. That's because I actually didn't film this clip. My lovely virtual assistant who is located in the Philippines, April, filmed this clip for me. We both worked together on this video project together and so about half the clips I filmed and half the clips that she, that she films and so thank you April for helping me with this video. I very much appreciated it. And you'll have noticed that I've blurred out uh, like all the information here. This is obviously very private. And just make sure you fill out all the details. April forgot to fill out the phone number here. And then just click enter my store. And then you know, that's it. Shopify will load your new settings into your store and create your new account. It might take a few moments to happen, but here we go. And that is it, we are done. On to step two. Step two, install the free Shopify theme minimal. Now as part of this step, we're only gonna be installing it. In the future, we are going to make modifications to the design. So let me switch over to my computer and show you how easy it is to install a new custom theme. Okay, so on the left sidebar menu, click online store. This will automatically take you to the themes page. And so when it loads, like scroll down the page and find the explore free themes button. Now there are a lot of themes to choose from. I think that minimal is nice, clean theme. So we're gonna go and select it down here. 
Now, minimal has three different versions. It has modern, vintage, and fashion. I think modern looks the best though, so we're gonna select it and then click the add minimal button. And then we're just gonna let it load. And we're going to let this page load as well. Excellent. Okay, so now come down to the actions button and click publish. And you'll get this little pop-up box here, so just click the publish button. And then of course, just let it load. And that's it, we've successfully installed our free minimal theme. It's time to move on to the next step. Step three, install the Obelo Shopify app and update its settings. Obelo is a Shopify app and it's pretty cool. It semi-automates your dropshipping store for you, not only by making it way easier and faster to add products to your store, but down the line when it comes to fulfilling orders and buying them from your dropshipper and getting them shipped out to your customer, it is going to semi-automate this process for you. Making your store as passive as possible, making it as easy to manage as possible is very important to scaling it to huge profits. And this is something that we teach in our free ebook, the six steps that six figure dropshipping stores follow to make over $10,000 a month. And if you would like to get that ebook for yourself, you can find a download link in the video description below. Obelo is free to use when you're just starting out. You only have to start paying any fees once you're making sales and doing transactions. And by that point, you're not going to mind. So for beginners, the app is essentially free. So I'm gonna switch back and show you how easy it is to do this. All right, so this time on the left side menu, click apps. And now come and click the visit Shopify app button. This will take you to the apps page. So on here, come to the search bar and type in Obelo. And then come and click on Obelo from the results and then just click the add app button and let it load. All right, so on this page, just scroll down and then click the install app button and then just let Shopify load it up. <laughs> and once it's loaded, we can then update the settings inside Obelo. All right, so uh, now we can click the settings button down here so in the store name box, uh, just enter the name of your store like I've done here. And uh, then what you wanna do is you will want to uh, come down and tick this little box and change this to be pounds if it's set to kgs like mine was. And then scroll down and make sure that this box is ticked so that customers can know when your item has been shipped. And then come down to order updates. When a product isn't available, set the quantity to zero and click notify me. When a variant vanishes, set the quantity to zero and click notify me. When a uh, cost changes, select do nothing but notify me and have it set so that when inventory changes to update automatically. Uh, so now we want to save these settings. Um, so of course, click save. Excellent. All right, now come and click on suppliers. So you wanna make sure that ePacket is selected from the list. And you will want to make sure that you've got your phone number in the uh, little box here. Don't worry, customers won't be able to see this. And in the custom notes section, put something like what I've put here. This will mean that the customer won't get any invoices or marketing materials, letting them know the original price. And we also need to click the add payment card button so that we can add in the credit card or debit card that's gonna be used to pay for the AliExpress items that our customers order. So remember, you won't be paid immediately by Shopify or PayPal for the items the customers order. You'll need to have money to cover this cost for yourself in the meantime. Cool, and then just click add card. And then that's it. Obelo will save the settings on this page and we can move on to step four. Step four, install the free Obelo Chrome extension. If you want Obelo to semi-automate your dropshipping store and to help you fulfill orders, then you are going to need to add products directly from AliExpress into your store using the app. And the easiest way to do this, in my personal opinion, is to install the Obelo Chrome extension and to use that to add products directly from AliExpress.com. And yes, this therefore means that to complete this step, you are going to need to download the Chrome browser. So if you don't have it already, I will have a link to how you can get it in the video description below. 
And as part of this process, you will also need to go to the Chrome Web Store so that you can download the free Oberlo extension. And yes, I will have a link to that in the video description. All right, so let's do this. All right, so once you've come to the Chrome Web Store, do a search in the search bar for Oberlo. And next to the search results, click the Add to Chrome button. And on the pop-up box, click Add Extension. And so once it's successfully installed, you'll get a little pop-up box, plus you'll see the Oberlo icon in the top right of your browser. Step five, add products into your Shopify store using Oberlo. All right, so now we're gonna to go to aliexpress.com and import products directly from there into our store using the Chrome extension that we just installed. So before you follow along with my tutorial clip, you're going to need to do three things. Firstly, open up your Chrome browser. Next, open up your Shopify store in one tab and then open up aliexpress.com in a second tab. And once you've done that, you can follow along with me. All right, so on AliExpress, come to the search bar and type in the product that you want to add to your store. The first product I added was the camera lens travel mug. So once the results load up, come and sort them by orders so that you can see the products with the most orders first. And then click on a listing that you like the look of. And if you check out the listing and you like the look of it, uh, click this button in your browser and then click the add to import list. And when you get that little success box with the green tick, it means that you've successfully added it to your import list. Now, as part of this tutorial, I used two different products. I used the camera lens travel mug and the self stir mug. So I wanted to add both of these products to my import list. So I went into the search for the self stir mug and sorted the results by orders again, and then clicked on a listing I liked the look of. This one over here. So again, if you like the listing, click the Oberlo Chrome extension button, and then click the add to import list. And when you've added all the items you want to add, click the open import list button. And you'll come to a page like this here, the import list. Click on the images tab and select the images you like and deselect the images you don't like. It's much better to do this now rather than later. And once you've done that, click import to store. And when you do that, the item will now appear under the products tab in your Shopify admin area. And you can edit the product page and sell the item in your store. So go ahead and do what I did here, which was go to the image tab for each of the products in my import list and selecting and deselecting the photos that you want to add and to go onto the product page. And then actually clicking the import uh, button. And once you've done that for all of the products you want to add, you can move on to the next step. Step six, add product collections. So the word collections is basically just Shopify's phrase for product categories. That's pretty much what you're going to do here. You're gonna be creating different product categories, i.e. different product collections for the different items that you're selling. <laughs> Luckily, it is very easy to do. On the left side menu, click Products, and then under the Products sub-menu, click Collections. So when the page loads, come and click the Create Collection button. So to create your first collection, just type in the name of your first product category. So mine is going to be Coffee Mugs. And then under Collection Type, click Manual. And uh, you can leave everything else as, and then click Save. And then that's it. So a collection, of course, is just Shopify's name for product category. All we're going to be doing is creating different product uh, categories. So this example store is going to be one that sells three types of products. It's going to sell coffee mugs, travel mugs, and coffee spoons, which is why we went ahead and created the categories for each of these. And so when you're doing this step yourself, think about uh, how you would like to group the products that you're selling into different categories and then create a collection for each of them. So we're gonna be using these different product categories or collections throughout the rest of the store creation process. And as you'll see during the steps when we edit our homepage, uh, you will probably want to have at least two product collections, ideally at least three. Um, but I don't recommend, create, don't recommend sorry, creating too many. Uh, don't create a collection unless you have at least three items to assign to it, otherwise it'll look very empty. And so there we go, we've added all of our product categories. It's time to move on to the next step. Step seven, edit your product pages. All right, so back in step five, I actually showed you how to add two different types of products. The first product that I added was this camera lens travel mug here, and the other was the self stirring mug. Now, these weren't randomly selected. I chose these for specific reasons. Now, the reason why I chose this camera lens travel mug here is because it only came in uh, one size and one color, this black version here. So in other words, this one here has no product variations. 
On the other hand, the South Surrey mug here, this came in six different types of colors, which means that when we imported this item with Obolo, we imported six different product variations. And as you will see when I switch over to my tutorial clip, it makes a big difference when you're editing the different product pages, so I recommend that you watch me edit both. And while I'm editing both, I will also show you how to put items on sale and how to not put items on sale. So this item here is not going to go on sale, but this one here is. All right, let's do this. On the left side menu, come and click products. And when it loads, find the product page that you want to edit and then click on it. So for this first example product, I'm going to edit this camera lens travel mug. So first things first, delete the title and add in your own. This title looks strange and the reason for that is because it was just a copy of the AliExpress product title and of course delete the product description which again is just a copy of the AliExpress product description and add your own. So I just copied and pasted a product description that I had already created in advance uh, as I filmed the step and as you can see I am formatting the description now. So usually for members inside the Dropship Club, which is our premium step-by-step -step AliExpress dropshipping video training course, we teach them to write short product descriptions since we also teach how to make sales with Facebook traffic. And for that you only need you know, short product descriptions. But I decided to do something a bit different for this video and made a product description that was longer and optimized for Google SEO traffic. And the Google algorithm likes to see plenty of page, plenty of words on the page, sorry, rather than just a few short lines, uh, which is why this one is a bit longer. Cool. So once you've finished editing your product description, be sure to select which collection that the item belongs in. And now if we come down to images, you'll see the images we selected earlier have been added and we can drag and drop them. And I did notice that I'd accidentally uploaded uh, a copy of one. So I just came and clicked this little delete button here and I got rid of it. So for this item, I'm not going to put it on sale. So what I'll do is I'll set the price and put nothing in the compare at price box. And so there will be no sale icon on the product page for this one. And you can keep the rest of it as is. And then all you've got to do is come and click save. Perfect. So this product is a simple product because it's got no product variations. So uh, there is just one version of it, the black travel mug. However, I'm now going to show you how to edit a more complicated product that comes in six different colors. <laughs> Uh, it is this mug here. Um, but first, you know, we need to go in and delete the product title. And again, I'm going to put my own one in. Well, I did put my own one in. And uh, we also need to delete the product description and put, you know, our own description in. And again, I had one copied and pasted in advance. And this description was also optimized for the Google uh, search engine. Now, I usually recommend focusing on paid traffic like Facebook ads to drive sales and customers to your store because it's easier and more reliable. Uh, however, if you want some SEO tips, I'm happy to give them to you. Like, first of all, try to make your description at least 400 words long and pick a keyword to target and try to include it four to five times in a natural way. And again, do not forget that shipping disclaimer. Uh, I bold mine so that the customer has no excuse to not have seen it. And of course, go in and select the, um, the product collection that it should be in. And uh, if we come down here to the images, you'll see that this does come in six colors. And I'm gonna like, show you how you can delete variations that you don't want. So next to the variation you don't want, click the little edit button and then scroll down this page and find the delete variant button. And of course, click delete variant. Gone, all right, so let's go and delete another variant. Uh, this light blue mug here. So, you know, again, I'll come and I'll click edit next to it and then come and click delete and delete again. All right, so now I'm gonna show you how to edit the price and name for the product variants you've chosen to keep. So click edit next to the first one. And under the pricing box, type in the price you want and I'll show you how to put it on sale as well. So type the real price under product price and in the compare at price box, type in the price that is higher. So for these mugs, I'm gonna place them on sale at $14.95 on sale from the usual price of $19.95. And then I'll click save and then I'll select the next variation, which is this red mug here. 
And what you'll see is that the price hasn't updated for the red mug. And that's because you can control the price for each product variation. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into each product variation and I'm going to set the prices to be the same, which is $14.95 on sale from its original price of $19.95. Um, but you don't have to do that. It's entirely up to you. Now for the dark blue mug, I'm also going to update its name so that when people see the name of this mug that it says it's blue, not dark blue by doing that right here. And then I'm going to come, come and click save. <laughs> Excellent. So now we just need to go back and delete all of the pictures of the product vari variants that we removed. So we're going to remove the photo of the light blue mug and remove the photo of the green mug. Now for the green one. And then that's it. We've successfully updated this product page and updated the variants um, within it. So now you need to just go through and do this for all of your product pages. Um, and then you can move on to the next step. Step eight, add free trust badges to your product pages. So this is a new addition to our 2019 tutorial. What we're gonna do is install a free app that will let us add these nifty trust badges to our product pages. And the reason why we recommend that you do this is because of the fact that when customers see icons and images that they trust, a little bit of that authority translates over to you, which will increase your sales and conversions, which of course means that you will make more money. So here is how you install them. So come to the left side menu and click apps. And then on this page, click the uh, Visit Shopify App Store button. And once again, this will take you to the Shopify's official app store. Once it loads, of course. So come to the search bar and type in free trust badge and do a search for that. And then click on the one that's literally titled free trust badge. <laughs> and then click the add app button. Now this is completely free, uh, at least of filming this video, so you won't be charged anything. And then click the install app button. And when you do that, Shopify will take a few moments to install it and update your store. Loading. Awesome, so now we're here. As you can see on the left, you can change which badges are showing. Uh, but what we want to do is we want to align uh, these badges to be on the left of the page. So under design settings, click the left, the left alignment button and then click the activate uh, badge button to add this to all your product pages and then just come and click save and that's it. We're done. Step nine, add free shipping to your orders. So of course, setting up shipping options is a necessary part of selling online, right? But it's also one of the more complicated elements of selling online. Try and figure out what your different shipping options should be and how much you should charge for each specific item is definitely frustrating. That's why I recommend that if you are new to selling online, that you have one shipping option for all of your items, and that is free shipping. Of course, the shipping isn't actually free. Instead, you just slightly raise your product price. So the product has free shipping, but it costs a little bit more. Not only is this way easier for you to manage, but it also means then that you get to promote your items as having free shipping, which is a great sales pitch and should increase your conversions. So let me show you how to do this. This time on the left menu, click settings, and then come and click the shipping icon. Now Shopify will automatically populate this with a local shipping option and a rest of the world shipping option. And we want to delete both of these. So click edit next to one and then scroll down and click delete zone and then confirm that you want to delete it and then go back to the shipping page and delete the other one. There we go. Now I'm only gonna be showing you one type of shipping option here, which is free shipping. So click add shipping zone. And then under shipping zone name, type in free shipping. You can type in whatever you truly want here. So now you can select which, which countries that you want to ship to. And keep in mind that Shopify will only allow customers to purchase items from your store if their country has a shipping option. So then come down to weight-based rates and click add rate. And then come and select the free shipping tick box. And then you just need to come and click done. And then all you need to do is click save. 
and then that's it. You've set up a free shipping option uh, for all of your items. And just a quick note, I do recommend that if you're a beginner to drop shipping, that you are very careful about what countries that you ship to in the beginning. Only select countries like the USA that have cheap, fast, efficient shipping options to with AliExpress items, sorry. I, I don't recommend having a worldwide shipping option. And for a bit more information on which countries you should drop ship to and which ones you shouldn't, I recommend checking out my video, 10 things to do before drop shipping. And I will have a link to that free video in the video description below. Step 10, set up Shopify payments and PayPal. Okay, so this is one of the biggest changes that Shopify made in 2018. And guess what? It's an amazing one. They finally made it so that people living outside the United States can have their currency set to USD while having Shopify payments turned on. Oh my goodness. You see, I normally recommend that new dropshippers set their store currency to USD because I usually recommend that even if they live outside the United States, that they target the USA market. Why? Well, because of the fact that it's got cheap, low-cost efficient shipping options, it's got lots of low-cost advertising opportunities, and customers in the United States are used to purchasing items online, which increases your conversions. Which means, as you're about to see me do in this tutorial, you need to go into your Shopify settings and make sure that your currency is set to be in USD. However, in the past, if you did this but you lived outside the USA, you could not use Shopify's internal payment gateway, Shopify Payments. Instead, you could only accept payments with PayPal. But that, of course, has now changed. Unfortunately, this feature isn't available to all countries, but the number that it is available to is growing. So if it's not available in your country, just sit back and wait tight for it to come out. And in the meantime, use PayPal exclusively. All right, so let's do this. All right, so on the left menu, click Settings, and then come and click General. Now what you're gonna to wanna to do is scroll down and next to standard and formats, make sure that you're using the imperial system and have pounds as your weight unit. And then you wanna come down to store currency and change it to be USD if it's not USD from the menu, and then select save. And then we are just gonna head back to settings and select payment providers, and then click add a, add a provider button, sorry. <laughs> So make sure that Shopify Payments is ticked and then click Continue. Now for some of you, uh, Shopify Payments may already be turned on, so you won't need to have done that step. And it's going to look like this when you first arrive. So come and click Complete Account Setup. And you will want to fill in all of these details. It is very important that all of this is accurate as this is a legal requirement. Now, as I've said before, for some of you, you won't need to add Shopify payments as a provider because it'll already be set there as default. All you need to do is complete, is to, sorry, tick the, or click the complete account setup button. Now, under product details, you can just type in a simple line explaining what you're selling like I've done here, very basic. And under the um, customer billing statement, you're going to see that you're going to need to add in a phone number. So make sure that it's accurate. And you'll also want to make sure that the bank account number is accurate as well because it's how you're going to get paid. Now, the payout currency will be set to your local currency and you can't change this, uh, but you don't want to change this anyway. <laughs> and then you can just click Complete Account Setup. All right, so now we're going to set up Pay PayPal's Express Gateway. Now, for some of you, you may not have to do this as it might already be turned on by default, but if it's not, click Select PayPal Method and uh, click the PayPal Express Checkup button like I did, and then scroll down on this page and click the Activate button. And you'll be redirected to PayPal to complete your setup. So enter in the email address of your PayPal account and then click Next. And then just give your login details to that PayPal account, and then click the I Give Permission button, and then that's it you can uh, click and go back to Shopify and you will have successfully added both PayPal and Shopify payments through Stripe as a payment method uh, for your store. Step 11, add branding to your store checkout. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna add theming and branding to our store's checkout page to increase conversions and encourage customers to complete their purchases. To do this, you're going to need two things. 
Firstly, you will need a store logo and you can either make one yourself or you can get a cheap but good one made off of Fiverr.com. Secondly, you are going to need to pick a custom brand color for your store. This color should reflect the types of items that you are selling in it. So for me, my store is selling coffee items and accessories. So I have chosen a coffee brown color. And we're actually gonna be using this color throughout this tutorial to increase your store's branding and theming and to make your store not look generic. So go ahead, get your store logo and pick a color and then you can follow along with me. On the left menu, come and click the online store button. And then this will take you directly to the themes page. And then on this page, click the customize button. And this is going to take you to the theme settings. All right, so here you wanna click on the uh, cart button. Cool, this has now taken us to the cart, so come and click the checkout button. Excellent, so now come and click on theme settings, and then we wanna come and click on checkout there, and then we want to come and we want to add a logo. And once it's loaded, come and select it. Excellent, you can see that it's now been added to the checkout page, which will strengthen your store's brand and make your store look even more professional. So now we're gonna change the shipping method button to be your store's custom branding color. So for the store, of course, I've chosen a coffee brown uh, since I'm selling coffee accessories. Cool, awesome. And with that, you are now done. If you follow these instructions, you'll have a custom checkout page that should increase conversions for your store. Just click save and then it's time to move on to the next step. Step 12, create an About Us page. So I'm gonna show you how to create an About Us page, but keep in mind that like, you can use this to create a page about anything that you like. So some other pages that you will probably want to create are a refund policy page, a terms of service page, and a privacy policy page. Now I don't have time to go over each of these different pages and show you how to create an individual one for them all, but if you just follow the steps in this tutorial and replicate that process for all of those, it should be easy. All right, so let's do this. So on the left side menu, click the online store button, and then from the sub menu, select the pages button, and then come and click the add page button and then come to the uh, title and type in About Us. And then come to the content box and write whatever you want for your About Us page. And shameless plug, inside our premium AliExpress dropshipping course, The Dropship Club, we give members a template that they can use here. And I also recommend uploading an image for it like I'm doing here. There we go. Then just click it and click Insert Image. Now once you've uploaded your image, you can click to align it and change it to the right and then click the uh, edit image button to do that. Um, now another thing too is that you could have increased the text spacing so that uh, there was um, uh, more spacing between the text and the image. And now I'm just going through and editing, uh, formatting the text here so that there's no empty white space. Cool. And once you've finished editing it, click save. And once you've done that, it's time to move on to the next step. And yes, just to add to my shameless plug, we do indeed have an over-the-shoulder premium video training course for AliExpress dropshipping called The Dropship Club. These videos are step-by-step -step just like this one. You can follow along with me on screen, but we don't just build a store. No, inside The Dropship Club, we also show you over-the-shoulder videos about how to select a store niche, how to pick the right products, how to create your Facebook ads and more. To find out how you can join and get access to our premium video training library, you'll find a link to the Dropship Club in the video description below. But for now, back to the video. Step 13, create a Contact Us page. For this step, we're gonna create a simple contact form. It's really easy to do. Just head back to the Pages section inside your Shopify admin dashboard and follow along with me. So come to the Pages page and then click the Add Page button again. And this time in the title, type Contact Us. And then come to the little drop down menu under templates and select this button here. And then come and click save. And boom, super easy. You now have your own contact page with a contact form. All messages submitted to it will be sent to the email address that you signed up for uh, with your Shopify account. Step 14, add menus to your store. 
So we're going to be editing two different types of menus here. The first menu that we're going to edit is the header menu. We're going to add all of those pages and this little drop down menu which will list all of the product collections. Plus we're also going to be modifying this footer menu down here too. Adding menus actually used to be one of the downsides to using Shopify. They made it really annoying but they have since made tweaks and modifications and now it's really easy. So let me show you how to do this. On the left side menu come and click online store. And then from the sub menu, come and click navigation. So now you're gonna be on the menu page. So first let's edit the main menu by clicking it. So now I'm gonna recommend that you click edit next to catalog and change the name of it to products. This is a personal choice, but I think products sounds much better than catalog. Fantastic, all right. Now come and click the add menu uh, button and type in the name of one of your product categories or collections. So I'm gonna type in coffee mugs. Now under link, come and click collections and then select the collection uh, from a list and then click the add button. And then of course, come and drag and drop it so that it's indented below products. And that's what you want to do. You just want to repeat this for all of your collections. So what we're doing here is we're creating something called a sub menu. So when a customer enters your store and puts in their mouse over the products tab in the main menu at the top of the website, a drop down menu will appear showing off all of your different product categories or collections that they can then browse. Now it used to be really annoying to add sub menus. If you look at my 2017 tutorial, you'll see that uh, Shopify really listened to feedback and improved that. So let's come and click add menu item again, this time type in about us and then under link, click pages and then find the About Us page and select it. And then just click Add. Perfect, all right, and now we're just gonna do the same thing for the Contact Us page and make sure that these uh, menu items are not indented below the Products one. Cool, now just come and click Save. So with that, we've created our main top menu with a sub menu featuring our different product collections. So now let's come back to the navigation page and this time we're gonna click on footer menu. So come and click add menu item and type in home page. And then come to link and uh, select home page from the list. There we go. And then just click add. So now we're gonna add two new product pages to it. First, the account login. So for this, what you'll want to do is you will want to um, type in your store URL and uh, you'll want to then at the end of it put slash account slash login. You'll see that I'm going to do that here. I'm gonna paste this link in. Great. And then come and click add. And then after creating that menu item, we'll create one for the cart page and your store cart URL will be your store's URL followed by slash cart. And don't worry, these dot uh, my Shopify URLs will work even after we've added in a new custom domain name. And when you've done that, you can reorder them if you like and then just click save and then we can move on to the next step. Step 15, create your store design and homepage. Awesome, so this is kind of a fun step because we're gonna be making our store look nice and professional by updating the design and creating a homepage. Now, a lot of people overthink the homepage design and you do not need to. It is not as important as you would expect. Do not get hung up on it. So just like when we edited our store checkout page, for this step, you're going to need to have your store logo and you're going to want to have your store's custom branded color. And if you missed earlier what I said about this, as part of this tutorial, we are choosing one custom brand color that matches or reflects the types of products that you are selling in your store. So for me, as part of the store tutorial, I have chosen one custom brand color, and that is a coffee bean brown, since, well, I am selling coffee items and accessories. <laughs> So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this color and we're gonna add splashes of it throughout our store design so that it will make your store look unique, original, and so that it will not feel generic. This will strengthen your brand, which will also increase the amount of trust that customers have in you, which will result in more sales and more money. So let's do this. So head to the left menu and click the online store button. And then this will by default take you to the theme page. So just come and click the customize button. Now the first thing that we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be adding in a store logo. 
So come and click the header button and then click the select image button and upload your logo. I had already uploaded mine, so I just clicked it and then click the select button. And I uh, changed your custom logo width to be 250 pixels since 60 is tiny. And then untick the announcement box. And then just come and head back. Now we're gonna be adding in images to the slideshow, so select it and follow along on screen with what I'm doing to add images to the slideshow. Now by default, there are four slide images. So if you don't have four images, you can just upload however many you have. For me, I uploaded two, and then you'll be able to see that I deleted the rest. Uh, if you don't have any images, a good idea is to see if your supplier has any high quality photos of products that you're selling, and you can look for images with Creative Commons licenses as well. So you can see here that I'm deleting uh, the extra slides that I don't want to use. So once you've finished that, uh, just go and head back. So now what we're going to do is we're going to delete all of the other widgets in the home page because we're going to be replacing them with different widgets um, that are going to show off the items that we're selling in our store, which is a really simple and easy way to design a professional looking home page. So now just come and click add section and then click Featured Collection, and then click Add. Now come to Heading and type in the name of your first product collection that you want to show off. I'm gonna show off my coffee mugs. And then come and uh, click the Change button, and then you wanna select the collection from the list. And then just wanna um, come and click the Select button. So uh, that's how you just add uh, these different featured uh, collections. So now what I recommend that you do is you go ahead and you do this two more times, like I'm doing here on screen. You know, because as I said, showing off products is an easy way to design a simple, clean homepage, even if you've got no experience with design or web development. Now, if you don't have three product collections and you've only got, say, two, then you can just add two featured collections here instead of three. It's not that big of a deal. Now, uh, you may have noticed that collapsible uh, coffee mug and that horn mug, uh, those images have logos on them. That is a big no-no. Do not use images that have your supplier's logo on it. That was just me being lazy for this tutorial when I imported those products, but I would have never used those images if I was building this store for real. Now I'm just finishing up with this final collection. Cool. Now we're gonna head back and we're gonna to go to the footer. And we want to remove uh, the blog widget. That's because we don't have a blog. Um, but you know, they are a feature in Shopify. So if you ever add one, you can bring this back. And I'm gonna remove the social media icons because I don't actually have any to put down here because this is just an example store. But if you did have them, I'd recommend keeping this. So now come back and click the theme settings. And uh, now we are going to be updating the colors. So remember your store's chosen color. So we're now gonna be using it to just follow along with my tutorial here and search your color into each of these themes, into each of these little color boxes like I'm doing here. And this is gonna give branding to your store and make it feel uh, more, professional, more professional and personable. Um, now for the top bar text, I'm gonna choose white because I've chosen a very dark store color, this coffee brown. But depending on your chosen color, black might be a better text color choice there. So we've updated the colors, so let's head back. Um, and this time we're gonna pick the um, typography, I think the, basically the font button. <laughs> and here you can change the font for your store. I recommend going through all the different options and seeing which one you like best. It's usually best to not use the default font if you can, because that font is very generic. Uh, and so by selecting a non-default store font, it will set your store design apart and make it look more original, which is of course good for your store branding. And keep in mind that each font has a different level of boldness that you can select for it. So uh, for my store headings, um, I've chosen a medium bold font for it. And uh, boom, once you've gone through and changed all your store fonts, you can then just click save and then check out your awesome creation. Uh, it look, looks a lot better than it did at the start. <laughs> So now it is time to move on to the next step. Step 16, add a store favicon. Another new addition to our 2019 store tutorial. This is kind of an optional one, but it's nice to do to increase your store's branding. A 
favicon is that little icon image that pops up on a website's browser tab. A favicon image should be 32 pixels by 32 pixels and the image should be on a transparent background. Here is the favicon that I chose to install for the store. As you can see, it's the brew treats icon and it was on a transparent background. So let's head back into our theme settings and install our favicon. Come to the left menu again and click online store and we're going to be going back into our theme settings. So once uh, your theme settings has loaded up, click theme settings and then click the favicon button and you can upload an image. Now I've already got mine uploaded so I just selected it and uh, yeah, once you select it all you need to do is click save. And you're done. You've now added a favicon to your store. Step 17, add Facebook Messenger live chat. Hey look, another new addition to our updated 2019 version of this tutorial. What we're going to do is we're going to add a free live chat app that will let customers interact directly with you with Facebook Messenger. Now not only is it more convenient for you to use the Facebook Messenger app rather than have to use a whole separate other live chat app, but it's also been shown that customers prefer it because of the fact that they already recognize it and they trust it. Just a note though, to complete the step, you are going to need to have a Facebook page set up for your new store and you will need to be an admin for it. Now, if you don't have that, you can skip over the step and come back to it later. But for now, let me show you how to do it. To come back to the Facebook app store like we did in previous steps and type in Facebook chat. Now from the search results, you want to find the Beaketing app <laughs> and on the app page, click the app button. Or the add app button, sorry. <laughs> and then come down and click install app. Now these guys make some of the best marketing apps for Shopify, by the way. I do highly recommend them. And a lot of their apps are either free or low cost, which is really cool. So on this page, click the big start uh, connection with your customers button. And then click continue. Uh, with your Facebook account. And then select your store's Facebook page and then come and click the customize your widget button. So now what we're going to do is we're going to customize uh, the look of it uh, very slightly before we turn the messenger app on. Um, so come down here and uh, click this little button here so that the app will look like that. Now this makes it look more like the classic Facebook Messenger icon um, and you can leave everything as is um, and then just come and click on to the next step and then just go and click through on to the next step and boom all you need to do is come and click the save and activate button at the bottom of the page and that's it. Step 18 select a payment plan for Shopify. So the Shopify free 14 day trial is fantastic for trying it out and seeing if it's right for you and to use during the store creation process. But if you want to actually sell to customers, then you do need to purchase a paid plan. Luckily, the lowest cost plan is perfect for most people. So let me show you how to do this. On the left menu, come and click the settings button. And on the settings page, click the account button. Then come and click compare plans. So you've got three options and almost everybody should select the $29 a month plan. Don't worry about the others. Now you can choose to pay monthly or upfront yearly. Obviously you'll save money with the yearly plans, but for most people, I would recommend that they just stick to paying monthly. Once you've filled out your payment details, click the start plan. Uh, button and a big part of the reason why I recommend paying monthly is cash flow. I recommend saving your startup money and putting it to other things like Facebook ads. <laughs> and then that's it. You are now ready to sell. Congratulations. We've just got a couple more steps to go. Step 19, choose a domain name. So now it's time to get rid of that Shopify URL and to replace it with our store's custom URL. When choosing a domain name, I have some tips for you. Firstly, Always choose a .com domain name. The only exception is if you plan to sell exclusively to say the United Kingdom, in which case you would pick the .co.uk domain name. But if you are selling to either the United States 
or you are selling internationally to multiple countries, then select the .com domain name. Not only is that considered the domain name for the United States, but it's actually considered the universal domain name as well. Secondly, do not pick another universal domain name like .org or .net. Stick exclusively to .com domain names. And finally, to keep your store looking professional, I recommend picking a domain name that is no more than three words, as if you go over that, you risk looking spammy. So let's go get a domain name. On the left side menu, click online store, and on the sub menu, click domains. And on the domains page, click the buy new domain button. Uh, and when this loads, uh, just type in the domain name that you want to use. So Shopify will tell you if it's available or not. And again, I strongly recommend that you only use a .com domain name. And if it's available, you'll get this buy button. So just click on it. Now, if you don't want your domain name to auto renew, uh, untick this box like I'm doing here. And then all you've got to do is click buy domain. So for most people, they probably shouldn't order renew. I recommend uh, seeing how your store goes first and seeing if you enjoy running it. And who is information, who is privacy, sorry, is included um, with each order, which is great because I strongly recommend that you get that. And then that's it. Just make sure that you go to your email account, connect to the, to the domain name and follow the verification process, um, include in the verification email. This is a legal requirement. And with that, it's time to move on to the next step. Step 20, send your store live. We are so close. We've got one final step to go. We now need to just remove the password that's stopping customers from entering our store and to send it live. All right, so on the left side menu, click online store and then come and click disable password. And on this page, which is the preference page, scroll down, untick that box and then click save. And then that's it. Your store is now live and ready for customers to come in, spend money and buy your items. Congratulations on taking action and finishing creating your new store. I hope this video tutorial helped you. And if it did, and you're not a subscriber here at Wholesale Ted, you should totally become one because we are constantly putting out new videos with actionable advice on how you can build your own money-making online business. So be sure to click that little subscribe button and click the notification bell next to it so that you don't miss out on any of our videos.